Listen, I get real, real quiet every time y'all start having them conversations about who gonna pay for what and your man gotta do all of the legwork because baby, listen, around here, I'ma pay half the rent and I ain't gonna complain about it. I might even pay a little bit more depending on what your pocket's looking like for the month because in this economy, I know, I get it, I know. I'm going to take my man on dates. I'm going to pay for a haircut. Babe, I'm about to get a pedicure. I'm going to treat you to one this month because I know you had a long month just like I did. Or shoot, happy Father's Day, happy birthday, whatever. Like, I'm paying for stuff. So, you know, kudos to the girls that got it all taken care of for them. Kudos to the girls that's just like, you know, my man does it all. I don't lift the finger. I lift fingers. I work with or without a man. I'm going to work. And I'm going to take care of my man the same way I want him to take care of me. I don't see nothing wrong with paying a little bill here and there. I don't see nothing wrong with our rent, $1,400. You pay seven. So who was that and where are more of those young ladies? Welcome to Modern Dating. And in this society, there is so much just um, influence through social media heaped upon the pedestrian person, the average person, where we are now told that we can't be valued as men if we don't make a certain amount of money, which generally is kind of within our control. Um, but if you're not a certain height, which is definitely out of our control, um, if you're not a bunch of these really, you know, alpha traits that don't exist in many people, and the more delusional the requests are, from said women, the smaller the percentage becomes of actually finding that person. So when people are talking about finding a unicorn, this is literally what they mean. When you're talking about trying to find a man over six foot, six foot one, who makes six figures, um, has a six pack and all those other things, it's like that's not a real, uh, that's not a real person. It's a case, a modern case of ch uh, chasing the Joneses or keeping up with the Joneses, which is a whole made up um, entity from a movie, I believe it was called the bureaucrats in like the 1930s. And it, basically what it was, it was meant to keep the average person trying to chase a particular, usually superficial dream as far as lifestyle and, and items and materials with this family that didn't even exist, the Joneses. So this is what's happening with a lot of cases. Now, and it, it goes both ways. Now, guys are trying to look for a particular woman who often doesn't exist, the Instagram model who doesn't mind, you know, sitting on the couch and playing video games on the w weekends and things like that. They're, we're looking for things that really don't exist in most people. And that's the hard part is because we're still being driven further and further apart. So in the case of this young lady, this is a real sentiment that I think really should have to be something that we stop and study because in this day and age, in this um, economy, pooling your resources is really a throwback to why people, you know, found value in each other to begin with. And even before we're talking about money, you're talking about things like one person goes out and hunts and gathers. The other person stays home to rear the children and things like that. And this is not a patriarchy argument. This is not misogyny. This is the roles that people took and they accepted about who they were and how they were going to survive together. If you had one person going out trying to do something that they couldn't, well, they were very likely to be injured or killed doing said, said task. And if you left the other person at home to try to rear the young and do things that weren't within their nature... Uh, you may have had something catastrophic happen on, on that end. So in this modern day, just taking two people who are working jobs and being able to say, yes, we're going to pool our resources. We're going to be able to build our credit, buy a home, uh, own our cars, things like that, and then have savings for later in life is an important piece. And it shouldn't just be heaped on one person. Or should it? What do you guys think? Should it just be the man who pays for all of these things and the woman gets to... Uh, maybe pay a lesser share or no share at all because she is at home raising the children. But there's, there's so many pitfalls and so many rabbit holes that you can go down. Say the woman doesn't want to have kids. Well, it's her body, her choice, but then the man is still having to pay for all of the bills. So how does that how does that leverage out if a man doesn't even get children through um, something like a marriage? And it's it's a tough one. Now, I'm not even sure if this young lady was married. Did she say she was married? Leave it in the comments because I saw it and I was just like, really cool. Um, and I think that 
while we see a whole bunch of women saying what I was talking about before, got to be, you know, so tall, got to make so much, blah, 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 blah. You know, we, we hear it all. We need to start showing more like this young lady. There's probably more young women out there that are echoing this sentiment but we don't hear them. It's the same way you see things on the news that are horrible all the time, but then why aren't we showing kids who are graduating from college at an early age or working in, um, in, in the community rather than just always the school shooters and the troublemakers? So we pick and choose and we accept and allow these things to creep into our psyche and then we turn around and somehow start parroting these, these sentiments. So what are your thoughts on this? Was this young lady right? Is it something that some of you um, do as women or have done guys what are your thoughts is this something that you would allow um, and I I say allow respectfully but would you just say no you know I've, I've got the bills you know you can pay for the vacations or you can put things off to the side it's very much like on a smaller scale just think about if you went out on a date and you were to pay the bill would you allow them to leave the tip or something along those lines is there a percentage that a woman should pay or you would have her pay and what percentage would that be? Ladies, what percentage would you be comfortable with paying for a lifetime? A lifetime, not just at some point, but a lifetime. So if you were to lose your job, your family would then suffer because of loss of income. So what what are some of these questions um what, what will they answer for us as a society? I think what they'll answer is how much we actually do need each other in a lot of capacities. And if we're really looking at it, there's a place that we really got to start examining that says somebody's benefiting from keeping a lot of people separate homeowners, apartment complexes, the tax system, because you have two classes of people working now, um, now that you have. Uh, women in the workplace. And I think it's a great thing. It should be people's choices. But was it always in the best interest of everybody? Let me know your thoughts. Leave in the comments. Subscriptions are free. Sharing is free. And it would be awesome. So I will see you guys very soon. And this is a reaction. We'll talk to you later. Peace, love, unity, solidarity.